If you're thinking about doing something around separating materials, chromatography is a really easy way of going about it. And yes, people do use sweets and things like that, but felt pens work even better and you'll have those in school. So you're separating ink through chromatography. I don't know if you've done much with separating materials, but when you're trying to think of things you can do, chromatography is one that's often recommended. And I have tried it with um, little candy sweets and things like that, but to be honest, felt pen works much better. Black ink isn't black, and it's an amazing surprise. I think some people get a little nervous about doing chromatography, so I thought I'll show you. It's so easy. The only thing is, it takes a little while. Five minutes? Okay. Yeah? Okay. So what I thought we'd do is set one up, I've got one already running, and then I've got some to show you that are finished. Okay. okay. So, what you need is some sort of paper. If you have a feel of that, mm -hmm. it's not shiny paper, it's quite soft. You could use um, coffee filter paper, that would work fine. This is actually um, water colour painting paper. Right. Um, sometimes you have this sort of quality in school. Mm -hmm. It needs to be something that water will draw across. And all you need to do is to do a good sized dot on that piece of paper about that far up from the bottom. Now, what you're doing is separating inks. So you can pick any ink you like. I've got lots of different coloured felt okay. pens. So pick a colour, any colour, and just do a good sized dot. Okay. Thank you. Green. So uh, about a centimetre? Yes, a centimetre is a good way. That's it, that's brilliant. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this into a container of water. There's mm -hmm. only a little bit of water in there. Mm -hmm. And something that's really important is that the water comes underneath your dot okay. when you put it in. Uh, you can use any container that you want to. You just need to be able to run the water across the paper. So if I just slip that in there, the water begins to run across the dot. And that will take probably about five minutes. What will happen will be the water will run up across the ink and split up the ink into all its different colours. Like I say, some inks have got lots of colours in yeah. and some haven't. So, typical fashion, here is one I made earlier. <laughs> this one, i just take it out and sort of get the water off a little bit. This one is now finished. It's black ink. And if I put it alongside these, which were finished before, you can yeah. see the whole range of colours. Now, we've got ordinary black felt pen, colouring yeah. felt pen, which is split up into this black, this purple, this blue. As the water moves across, it sort of drops off the different colours at different rates. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. This is orange. OK. It, it's got a tiny bit of yellow at the top. But not much, really. Mm. I bet you can't guess what colour that one is. Pink. Um, it's blue. Wow. It's actually yeah. the blue. Not all blues will come out like that. They could be different. And this one is purple. Mm -hmm. That's a handwriting pen, a black handwriting pen, which has worked. It's OK. It's not wonderful. And certainly... Um, permanent marker doesn't work because water, it, which, which we're using as a sort of solvent, doesn't work with permanent marker. And to be honest, those dry wipe pens that we use in school all the time, they aren't very good either. But the thing to do is experiment and let the children experiment mm -hmm. to see if they can predict what on earth happens splitting up inks. <laughs> 